Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Sorry, it's my, a little bit longer, but we've only got us and then one more to go. So you hold in there. All right. So transformation to a station. Basically, what we've got is perfect. Okay, project overview. So Tamworth Regional Council have a fair few amount of rural waste management facilities. So they are have partial infrastructure for landfilling as well as resource recovery um, activities. So the two sites in particular that we're focusing on this afternoon, they are manned sites open twice a week. Um, so council submitted two applications to the Environmental Trust for grant funding in round three. Um, prior to this, we committed, completed sorry, some ERAMP assessments. Um, we hired a consultant to complete the landfill closure plans landfill capping designs, as well as concept designs for the transfer stations. And as well as part of this, we had to undertake a development application and construction certificate application prior to proceeding. So we had to advise the residents of works going on in the community, because they are the ones that were going to be impacted during the works. Um, also as well, did some communications via our website and installation of signage and Yep, then we did the construction internally. So we have our project deliverables. So continuing to provide the rural and surrounding community with access to a waste management facility, improve safety for staff and community site users. We also did reduced environmental impacts, improved opportunity for recycling and resource recovery, and improved visual aesthetics. How did the funding come about? So again, we completed some E-Ramp assessments um, on all of our council waste management facilities. We've got 11 operating sites in our local government area. We've got mixed landfills, so six uh, landfills and our transfer stations with five. So the e ramp highlighted Durai and Summerton landfills as being potentially problematic uh, and this also supported council's decision to cease landfilling and convert the sites into small vehicle transfer stations. So in November 2017, we submitted two applications to the Environmental Trust for grant funds, one for Durai and one for Summerton. Um, so Durai was awarded 198,800 and Summerton was awarded 192,620. In addition to this, we also had some additional internal council funding to support these projects. Um, so why transfer station? So as part of this, why do we choose to continue to have these sites open? Why didn't we just close them? The main, I suppose, driver behind this was that we have a internal integrated waste management and resource recovery strategy that council adopted in 2017. Now under this, we've got numerous of themes. We've got seven themes. So the main drivers for these were the first two points. Um, so we see we've got the strategy and then the New South Wales waste avoidance and resource recovery strategy targets. So we were, we're really trying to reach those targets. Um, so with these, oh, sorry, excuse me. Um, so the main thing was that we wanted to ensure that the residents have access to a waste management facility. This would allow us to increase our recycling, community recycling, reduce our littering, and any incidences of illegal dumping. So these two are historical sites. So along with historical sites, you've got your site's constraints. Um, yep, yeah, sorry. Updated infrastructure, sites align with councils, other waste management facilities and we were able to seek assisting. So under Council's waste strategy, we're working towards sustainable waste management. So this includes ceasing of landfill activities and upgrading infrastructure to improve resource recovery and consistency of waste management between sites. So with this, that basically means we're aiming to provide improved resource recovery activities of e-waste, scrap metal, green waste, batteries, um, gas, motor oil. So we'd like to improve that consistency between all of our sites. Some are better than others, but that's just the way it is. So we're doing one site at a time. 
So with that, so obviously, yeah, we sought funding from New South Wales EPA, and this aided us to provide a long-term solution to help continue to provide the surrounding communities with rural, uh, sorry, with access to waste management facilities. So we've got project constraints and considerations before we went into this. I had in-depth conversations with our waste management officers, with our landfill officers, and basically most historical sites are unlined. Uh, we've got very limited records on data um, on what and where the waste was disposed of. Again, limited infrastructures on site to manage stormwater leachate capture. Landfill cell size and council's estimates on land lifespan of the cell. Um, on these sites, you have limited areas for cell expansion due to the areas of the sites. Increasing site maintenance costs, covering of your cells, cleanup of windblown litter, unauthorised access, theft, vandalism. Um, so on these sites, we have limited resources. Most of them don't have CCTV to improve capture of being able to identify um, and reduce incidents of illegal dumping. Um, also, yeah, penalising anybody, that sort of stuff. So the E-Ramps identified groundwater, surface water risks at Durai and Somerton to be medium to high risk. This is something that we wanted to address. We obviously don't want, they're an unlicensed site, so we don't have to do it, but it's good practice. So that's what we're trying to roll out. Uh, land ownership. So Summerton Landfill was actually, it's on Crown Land, land parcel itself. We have a small portion designated to our current activities. So what we needed to do was we had to consult with our native title manager internally at council and they went through their processes. If council owns the land parcel, you technically, you're okay, you won't usually have to go through that process. But that itself, you need time. Um, so if that's a concern to you, make sure you give yourself plenty of time. Don't push your project. So limited resource recovery and structure on site. This was limiting our opportunity internally to further source separate and increase our diversion rates to help us achieve our war strategy targets. Smaller site usages. These sites are servicing populations of less than 500. Um, so accessing the site due to locations. They're over 20 kilometres and 40 kilometres from Tamworth, so 15, half an hour, minute drives. Most of these residences don't necessarily have a curbside collection, so we still need to have them able to be able to have a waste management facility. Um, and so we're moving on, so we've got some detailed design considerations. So Matt will actually go through these with you. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, Megan, for the introduction on the project. So effectively, we had these two sites. They're quite old, unknown where the extents of the waste were and what was in it. So obviously there's no going around digging things up and moving them around. Um, for asbestos and all sorts of other issues. So effectively, the working area on these sites, given the size, is also quite prohibitive. Um, the issues we faced were predominantly, particularly with the Jura site, is most of the site is either an old quarry or a landfill. Um, the landfill was actually put in the bottom of the site where the quarry used to be and the balance of the site is more or less the side of a hill. So to build a workable transfer station is quite a challenge. Building that on what is effectively unconsolidated waste um, wasn't gonna bode very well with the concrete slabs and level working areas. Um, so for us, obviously the designs were quite a challenge for the consultancies we employed to put the designs together. For them, they obviously had to consider the, uh, the, the surface water flows, where that might go to, how that might work with capping um, the traffic flow, so obviously we have an onus to keep the traffic or the, the our customers safe. Um, one of the biggest issues we face is on-site collisions, keeping customers safe from each other. They like to run over one another. They're not always great drivers. Um, so part of that was effectively looking at the designs that were available. Um, what we determined was effectively Jura had no option. The transfer either had to be on the site or not at all. Um, so obviously the design solution was found there with Summerton, given the extremely limited area on that site. 
We look to build on a greenfield site immediately adjacent, or still on Crown land, um, but immediately, immediately adjacent to the current landfill facility. Um, other factors that came in were things like handrail design. So obviously we're building ramps or, or facilities there that allow the um, end users or the, the public to access these bins. And part of that process was making sure they don't end up in the bin. Um, for obvious reasons, that's a consideration of local government. Um, finally, realistically, the, the other thing is obviously having surveillance. So we've got manned sites on these cases and it's really important for that operator or the attendant of that site to be able to see what's going on. Um, not everyone's very honest about what's in the trailer today. Um, so making sure that we didn't find asbestos being dumped in green waste areas, bins, or any future transfer um, station, recycling bins. Um, I think I went one too many. Then. So that's Dura Landfill. Um, no. Which one's the pointer? Basically, you can see the site itself. So the, that to the left-hand side of the screen, that's the existing landfill cell. Um, that's effectively, that's the deepest pit of the quarry that it once was, probably 70, 80, 90 years ago. Um, the section under that's quite green in the centre is another old landfill area that's just had waste accumulate over the years and the grass and everything grow up amongst it. And on the far right hand side of the picture is where the stockpiles for green waste and metal that we actually have been sort of separating were put on site. Um, as you can see, the boundaries are the yellow line, not many areas to go and not real flat. So there's the pictures of what it looked like um, prior to the works that I'll be honest, Megan did this project before Megan did all this work. Um, so the top left, that was your green waste stockpiles, top right, um, metal stockpiles with some refrigeration equipment and whatnot for degassing. And as you can see, obviously there's crude sort of leveled areas um, that were available, but didn't take very long to fill up and reach capacity. So that gives you a bit of a long section of the site itself. Um, effectively, you've got can't make that work, but you've got the existing site, which you can see is a basin. So the left hand, left hand side of that long section is your landfill, all the rainwater, everything drains to that point. So it was quite a, and still is to this day, an unfriendly site. So if you have heavy rainfall, it becomes quite a giant pool of rubbish and leachate stormwater. So we came up, that well not we, the, con the consultants came up with the concept of putting together the transfer station up on the high end. Um, and obviously importing fill as part of the design to create some sort of profile that we could then generate some sort of stormwater control in the longer term. Um, plan view, there is obviously the, the extents of the site, if you like, and that shaded grey end will be the, or is now the transfer station end. So for us, this was the construction phase. Um, you can see it was built basically from a, a block wall, so a Besser brick style wall with an infill um, concrete layer, um, rebar and whatnot. Leveled areas to the left of the, so the bottom photo, you can see the hard stand areas that have been generated as a ceiling layer and then placement of a um, hard stand or trafficable surface. They'll be used for stockpiling of metal and green waste. Um, and the wall itself will accommodate in the future too. Waste bins, currently we have a recycling bin on site. Um, a full bitumen seal is put down. I believe that's just the emulsion seal, but we'll have a full bitumen seal, 2K bitumen um, next summer when the temperatures get a bit warmer again. Um, we obviously didn't seal the hard stand areas for resource recovery. There's quite a lot of heavy equipment that operates on those areas and the use of that, including like bailing infra infrastructure for um, the metal recyclers wouldn't bode very well with um, bitumen seals. You'd probably find you'd lose that asset fairly quick. Um, so that site there is turned out to be quite a, a workable solution. Longer term, we'll look at in, installing further shedding and whatnot to accommodate the, like an extension of our main site CRC. So to just have one or two paint stillages, um, battery cages or pallets, bunded pallets, and have them undercover in a small shed. And part of that process will be to also relocate that site office, um, which you can see, which is effectively a container 
over in the rear part of the photo with a bit of a tropical roof on it. Um, that will be relocated to a point where we get better surveillance of the activities that are occurring on site. Last steps will also be the implementation of the traffic control plan, so I'll see line marking, signage, and making sure that things move in a in a approved manner. Um, the downside to this design is effectively there's a reversing movement, so it requires the customer to reverse up to that little um, concrete slab that sits at the rear that acts like a curb effectively. Um, the issue is vehicles reversing customers don't always mix well together. They run into each other, run over each other. Um, and analysing you know, reported near misses and incidents. Um, generally speaking, we try to avoid this sort of solution. However, given the site constraints, a alternative wasn't available. So for us, that's just another view. You can see the hard stands down to the, to the right hand side of the photo. Summit and landfill. Um, you can see the site is shaded red right down in the bottom part of the photo there. Um, that part of the site is all part of that giant parcel, which is actually one big crown land parcel. So realistically, there was land available but not owned by council. Megan mentioned the difficulties associated with um, obtaining some sort of development approval on crown land. That usually triggers native title searches and all sorts of other intricacies that we have to go through. So again there you can see effectively the entire site um, on the right hand side of shade line is the original landfill. It covers pretty much that entire area's landfill at some point in time. Obviously it's had some nice grass and dirt thrown over it at a time but no real formal capping process to this date. No leachate control, no stormwater control. Again, quite a liability from an environmental point of view. So this, this is the site where we looked at um, effectively a greenfield site for our transfer, so effectively a blank canvas, we're able to start doing some better, more um, robust initiatives um, around getting traffic control and, and management of the infrastructure on that site. So that will be in the box to the left hand side and to this day hasn't started. Um, construction's due in June I, or July this year, I believe. So you can, again, you can see in the photo on the right, another site that was once a former quarry. Um, Tamworth Council, or Parry, in the former days had a great affinity with digging holes for gravel pits and when you're finished doing that, fill it with rubbish. Um, not a great outcome for us here in 2019 to have to go around and deal with. This is the design that the consultants came up with for the transfer station. Obviously Greenfield, we can start looking at forward movement, um, circular motion, We've adopted this design at a few of our other rural or village sites where the room was available. Um, allows for expansion over time too. So if you have larger stockpiles that attracts better prices for metal recyclers, they prefer to come out and get 500 tonnes as opposed to 50 tonnes. Um, the prices they'll pay obviously reflect that uh, premium on those sort of scenarios. This one here will use a drive over ramp arrangement. So quite often for a safety perspective, you want to get your customer above the bin, they're putting their waste in. Um, building a push pit or something on, on the, you know, buried or sunken into the ground is quite an expensive option. For us, it's easier to simply have something where the, the customer drops it straight in the bin. It's a rel relatively low cost option. Um, quite quick to build, it's effective, and from an asset management point of view, quite sound. So that's an example of one we've built at another site called Katingle, which is just outside Tamworth. So again, forward movement, customer drives over, no reversing movements, and they throw their waste either left or right, based on um, which one takes the type of waste they're using. So in that case there, that one's designed to hold four bins, so two recycling, two waste, and the site attendant effectively gives them instructions on which ones to use for their loads each day. That's pretty much it for that one. Um, we anticipate the capping aspects of those sites once the, the sites are fully operational as transfer stations, including general waste. Um, we intend to roll that process out in early 2021 as part of our uh, waste contract collection um, renewal. Reason being, it's a bit hard at this point in time at the very end of our current waste contract to ask our current contractor to install the additional infrastructure and then collect it, so at a reasonable cost to council. 
Um, there's some websites if you want to find out anything more or ask Megan and I later on. Question? Thomas. Yeah, give it. Given they're unlicensed and the quantities of waste, you're not really triggering any thresholds for planning purposes that would require an EPA approval or licence. So it wasn't designated development. Um, effectively, it's all at a local level. There was no real issue beyond maintaining you know, development standards that protected the current environment. Anything else? Good. Thank you.